Hara raised an eyebrow at Alice and said, that sounds a little too good to be true. Tell me the details. Alice finally noticed the boy who was following her and asked, who is that? Hara glanced at the boy and realized she had hired the boy without even knowing his name. The boy stuttered for a moment, then flushed and finally said, I'm Liam. I. I. I'm going to be. Hara came to his rescue and said, Alice, this is our new midshipman. Henry will appreciate getting out of the boiler room more often and the food should improve with his mood. Alice grinned and said, he actually made souffle today since he didn't have to stoke the boiler. The cargo is already loaded. We can go whenever you want. Hara had no reason to stick around so she said, right away. Gideon had some visitors when I took him home. I think they might distract him long enough for us to get away. Alice blinked in confusion and asked, Gideon wanted to stay on the ship. I thought this whole trip was to get him home. Hara said, he wants more than a trip on the airship, Alice. Alice frowned as she thought this over and said when she finally figured out what she meant. But what do you feel about it? Hara sighed at the woman's perception and said, I'll be nice this time Alice as you don't know any better, but the truth is that it isn't any of your business. Alice flushed and quickly said, sorry, Captain. You are completely right. It is none of my business. Let me settle in the boy in the boiler room and I can report back to you about the cargo. Since it was already loaded, she would take it even if it was too good to be true. There would certainly be strings attached. Alice was a kind soul. She would learn soon enough that some things weren't to be trusted and a good deal was one of those. The boy leaned over the railing and he said, Man, this is high up. Alice chuckled and said, You haven't seen anything yet. We are low for docking. This beautiful beast can go a lot higher. Hara said, I hope you aren't afraid of heights. Henry yelled from further in the ship, Hurry up dinner is almost ready. Hara said, It might have to wait a short while. I want to head out first. She turned to Alice and asked, So, where are we going, Alice? Alice checked a piece of paper with the details of the delivery and said, Carrick. Hara closed her eyes and tilted her head back. Her lips moved in a silent prayer. Henry groaned and Alice asked, What? Hara opened her eyes and said, It isn't a very pleasant place to go. Not to worry. We will be there in under a week and during that time I think I'll show you how to read the smuggler's code. We can avoid this in the future. The string attached to this cargo wasn't ideal but it wasn't too bad. Carrick was a raider's town. They had been the home to killers and assassins since William conquered most of Europe and forced their element to hide at the edges of the empire. Carrick in those days had been further away from the border than it was today. The violent elements there hadn't got any tamer as so-called civilization got closer. It would be an interesting trip, but she had been there before and had survived. Hara rolled out one map. She said, these are in code. So you need to know the code before you can understand it. Here is the symbol for the ports. Next to it shows what facilities they have. Hara pulled a piece of paper closer and started drawing the symbols she was talking about and put translations beside them. These ports can repair and deal with most issues in engineering. These here show where you can get guns. She looked at Alice significantly and said, you want to avoid any of these towns. To get the guns, you have to run on the black market. There is no law in these towns. Alice blushed and said, is Carrick one of those towns? Hara didn't want to hurt the girl, but she needed to know if she was going to stay on the ship. Yes. Here is Carrick. The port was in the Middle East. In the area still under dispute after the last move by the Empire over a hundred years before. There was a delicate piece of sorts, but it could easily turn to full-out war. The men there tended to be as rough as the area they lived in. Alice asked shyly. Is it really dangerous? Again Hara didn't hold back. Yes. 
So when we go there, no one is leaving the ship except those going with me. But Alice, that isn't the issue. The deal sounded great. Well, there was a reason. Next time, take someone else with you. They can help you see the tricks as you learn. Alice sniffed and said, maybe I shouldn't make any more deals. Hara shook her head and said, don't be like that, Alice. You will learn. Besides, the last time Hara had gone looking for the cargo, she couldn't get anyone to talk to her. Alice must have some special charm to get men to talk business with her. Chapter 8 The wind caressed his skin. Gideon pumped his wings and thought he really should do this more often. He had spent the last few decades playing with numbers in various universities around the empire. He had forgotten what it was like to fly over the plains. The feel of the air and space around him. He had waited for it to get dark before he had set off as he hated scaring the populace with his form. He liked night flying the best. The sense of space was exponential. It seemed he was flying through space itself. The only thing which compared to this feeling was when he was with Hara. The way she moved and her wit thrilled him like dropping from a height and watching the ground rush towards him. Gideon flipped a loop in the air as he flew. He wasn't too far from the blazing blunderbuss and he was considering how angry Hara was going to be. She would see her trip to the city as pointless. Her eyes would probably spark. She also wouldn't be shocked. She was far from stupid and she would know he had wings and he would follow her. She would have picked her destination at the last minute to give him the slip. But he could smell her on the air. It wouldn't matter which way she went, he would be able to follow her. Gideon saw the ship in the distance. It had a few running lights lit as it moved through the air. Grinning, he approached cautiously. He didn't grab onto the ship as he usually did when he was in dragon form. Instead, he placed himself above the ship and changed to human form. Gideon dropped onto the envelope holding the gases, which kept the ship afloat. He slid down the side and caught one of the ropes and brought himself to a stop. He hung there for a moment, grinning. It didn't take long for Gideon to make his way onto the deck and to sneak further into the ship. Instead of going to his room, he made his way to the stateroom. It was time to move things forward a bit more. Especially because Hara had returned the kiss in his apartment. She had been timid, but there had been heat there. She felt it like he did. He could have pushed it then if only there hadn't been company. But he would be patient. He had the time after all. When he got to her stateroom, the only one there was the metal flying creature. The clockwork dragon slept in a small hollow on the bed. He wrinkled his nose at the creature. It lifted its head and trilled at him with a question. Gideon crouched down so he was close to the creature. He would not call it a dragon. He narrowed his eyes and said, let us get this clear. Hara is going to be my queen. You make her happy so you will remain in her life, but you will not hinder me. The creature trilled and it must have understood somewhat as it uncurled itself and moved it somewhere else to sleep. Eyeing the bed, Gideon grinned. Sass had always suited him before. He wasn't about to stop. Hara was going to be mad with him anyway. He might as well make it interesting. Hara was exhausted. They hadn't been able to afford more people to help them load the supplies so she had pitched in with the others earlier in the evening. They had done a good job to get it all on board but only Henry had known how to load cargo and he had been cooking. It meant moving everything around before they could get any real height. An airship which wasn't loaded, Wright could tip in the stronger breezes higher up in the atmosphere. They had all pitched in to move things quickly. But it meant her muscles now ached. Hara didn't turn up the light in her cabin. She would just fall on the bed and sleep. She was that exhausted. Henry had served cheese and crackers for a late supper, but she didn't complain. She had been too tired to even eat. Alice was taking the night watch. She was feeling a bit guilty. 
Hara regretted making her feel guilty for picking a dangerous cargo. She was young. This wouldn't be her last mistake and Hara certainly had made her own mistakes. She would talk with the girl in the morning. At least the girl had got them a cargo. Hara stripped off her leathers and ran a hand through her loosened hair. She sat on the edge of her bed, but it wasn't for long. She jumped to her feet when she sat on something which shouldn't be there.